In this video, I'll show you how to stop low frequency oscillation and load vibration by using vibration suppression in Sigma Win Plus. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. This linear motor moves two loads secured at the end of a rod, and you can see that the oscillation is pretty severe. It is a direct drive system with a coil moving above the magnet track and a linear encoder for feedback. I'm connected to the Sigma 7 amplifier with Sigma Win Plus and commanding the move through program jog, although the command could instead originate from the controller. I haven't done any tuning from default, so it is still in the adaptive tuningless mode. The short rod seems okay, but the tall rod really vibrates excessively. A trace shows that this vibration is easily detected by the encoder as position error with an amplitude of about 420 reference units, which is about 33 microns. And that's good because it means the motor can see the vibration and suppress it. We can see that both the position error and the torque reference signal, or force reference, are oscillating at a frequency of about 6 hertz. The adaptive nature of the default tuningless mode is not well suited for vibrating loads with a fixed mass. Instead, it's the perfect time to use vibration suppression, which is a function available within the model following control tuning mode. The easiest way to use these features is to go through the auto-tuning process here under tuning. Of course, heed the warnings and execute. And the first requirement is to turn off the tuning less mode. So it's okay to change that. And it'll cycle power like it says here. Now I can go back into tuning as before. But before you jump to auto-tuning, it's important to first find the inertia ratio, or in this case, mass ratio. If that's grayed out, then you just need to close any conflicting windows. And also, you want the machine somewhere in the middle of its range of motion, since the motor is going to move in both directions when you find the mass ratio. So let's execute this. If the speed is too fast, you could change it. But this will be fine for this application. Just click through the buttons here to get this running. Now servo on and the forward move and the reverse move. It's iterating to find the identified mass ratio. I'll do that again and again. Up near 600 and two more times. It's settled in at 606. Now we'll finish this up here with uh, clicking next to turn the servo off and write the result into the parameter. That finishes the inertia ratio. A software reset is required. You click OK. That's like a reboot. I'll execute that. Just takes a few seconds. One more check before you run auto tuning is the value of positioning completed width PN522 should be set to a reasonable value for the application as it does have significant impact on the auto-tuning result. I have it set to 1 micron, which is 13 encoder pulses. It's also recommended to turn off mode switch by raising the torque level to max, which is 800%, beyond the capacity of the motor, and write that in. And in fact, there are a number of preliminary checks for auto-tuning listed in the manual. And now I'm ready for auto-tuning with position reference input, which will be from program jog. Auto-tuning. And you see that this default mode here, mode 2 for positioning, does list model following control and vibration suppression. Mode selection 3 also uses model following control, even though it's not mentioned here. If you need vibration suppression, you don't want to choose number one standard because you don't have model following control or vibration suppression. So those two go hand in hand. Let's leave it at the default here of number two. 
The mechanism is a linear motor, and we generally recommend you start with the default tuning parameters. Next, and confirm the parameter change, confirm the mass ratio. And all we need to do now is get that motor moving and hit start tuning. So I will pull up the program jog again, run servo on, execute, confirm we're not near the edge of travel, okay. And now we can start tuning. Yes to the warning. You see the first thing that's happened is the vibration suppression has been activated. Now that doesn't cancel the vibration in motion, but it does prevent future vibrations at that frequency. Now it's going through the gain search behavior evaluation. Trying to turn different gains up and down to see what works the best. And tuning is complete. It's easy to see visually that the vibration is all but gone. You see that the feedback speed definitely does not follow the reference pulse speed, but it is a smooth response. There's still a slight vibration in the position error, less than one micron since the coin or in position signal remains low here. And that oscillation is measuring at around 23 hertz, probably due to that shorter rod vibrating, not the uh, taller rod with the six hertz vibration that we saw earlier. Still, the settling time is around 350 milliseconds for a one micron in position window at the carriage, at least. If I compare the parameters to default, it reveals that quite a number of parameters have been changed by auto-tuning, among them model following control and vibration suppression at a frequency of 6.4 hertz. I think you'll agree that the result is amazing compared to what we started with. Thank you for watching this video. Please note that the product manual contains a detailed section on tuning. And additionally, Yaskawa offers free hands-on self-guided video training covering the basics of Sigma Win Plus software and servo tuning at www.yaskawa.com slash self-guided. We also offer a live tuning lab where you can come in and tune a mechanism like this for yourself along with the guidance of an instructor. For more information, please go to yaskawa.com.